Thank you, Griffin, and thank you, Senator, and thank you all for being here on this uh, most important uh, of days. Um, 20 years ago today, our nation suffered the worst foreign attack ever on American soil. When the first plane hit the World Trade Center's North Tower at 8.46 a.m., we were all stunned by what had happened. And uh, I know, as Senator Blessing mentioned, we all know where we were that day and kind of remember that one day in particular. It's, I'm old enough to remember like when Kennedy was assassinated and I was in the fifth grade. We all remember these, I remember when the, uh, one of these shuttles you know, was, was lost. You remember where you were that day. I was in that House gym actually working out with a number of, of the, both Republican and Democratic members of Congress and we had a TV on. We saw both, both planes hit, quickly took a shower and headed back to my office and shortly after that a police officer came in and said we're evacuating the building, there's another plane on the way and I remember heading outside and looking down towards the other direction down from my office building, you could see black smoke just billowing up from where the Pentagon had been hit. So we all remember where we were um, that day. And as we know, um, 17 minutes after that first plane, when the second plane hit the second tower, it was clear that it was an intentional, that we were under attack. As we all now know, two more planes had been hijacked by Al-Qaeda terrorists, who as we all know were harbored by the Taliban. One hit the Pentagon at 9.37, and the other was headed for the U.S. Capitol building, but crashed in a field in Pennsylvania when a group of brave Americans decided no, and they fought back. In just a little over an hour, our world, as the Senator mentioned, had changed, maybe forever. For a while, we all came together. Americans of every political stripe uh, cheered our first responders, saluted our brave men and women in uniform, flew our flag and meant it, and praised President Bush's decisive response. Members of Congress sang, God bless America on the Capitol steps. I was there, which only hours before had been targeted. We weren't Republicans or Democrats, we were Americans. But most importantly, we all vowed to never forget. We'd never forget the nearly 3,000 of us who died on September 11th. We'd never forget the heroic sacrifices of the police and firefighters who rushed into harm's way to try to save those endangered by the attacks. And we'd never forget the thousands of brave men and women who would fight the war on terror to keep us safe. Sadly, some have forgotten and have replaced patriotism and unity and resolve with political considerations. Despite what many in the mainstream press may say, taking the fight to the terrorists worked. Our military disrupted the terrorist networks, decimated their leadership structure, and prevented another major attack on America for the past two decades. For the past 20 years, we have not suffered a major attack on our soil because of the brave men and women who fought this war. Unfortunately, that very success has led to complacency in some corners of our government and we do face other serious problems, the pandemic, uh, the border crisis, rising crime rates, just to name a few. But we cannot afford to let complacency take hold in our effort to defeat terrorism across the globe. Because I can assure you, our enemies, those who hate America and all freedom-loving people will not be complacent. We witnessed that during the recent withdrawal from Afghanistan. As soon as the terrorists saw the confusion caused by the poorly planned exit, they struck. 13 brave Americans and over 150 Afghan civilians were killed in seconds. We must make sure that they didn't die in vain. Let their sacrifice serve as a reminder of the challenge we continue to face. Just as we did 20 years ago, we must renew our vow to never forget. We must honor our veterans, support our first responders, and thank those who sacrifice every day to keep us safe. And many of those are here today, the men and women, the fire department, the police department, first responders, and others. 
We must teach our children and our grandchildren about September 11th and the war on terror, just as we were taught about the wars waged against fascism and communism and totalitarianism. And we must never forget that the terrorists who hate us do so because we are the greatest nation on the globe, and the history of mankind for that matter. And we value and respect the freedom and personal liberty of every human being, no matter their race, their religion, their nationality. That's what's made this nation exceptional throughout our history. And remembering that fact could bring us back together and make sure we continue to lead the world far into the future. I want to thank again everyone for being here today and for everything that you do, especially the firefighters and the police officers and our first responders. And, and make sure that we never forget the great service that, that they do for us. God bless each and every one of you. God bless your families. God bless Green Township and God bless America. Thank you very much.